Welcome to the channel where all you gotta do is explain how this variable speed drive works. So this is a, a variable speed mechanism off of my Bobcat skid steer. It's slightly apart because in order to take it off the tractor. So this is a little snap ring here. It goes in there and that reacts the force against this little this is the plate and then this little, this little snap ring goes into there. You have to take this off which is the hydraulic line to it and then this thing here will go up and down. See that? So it's basically a hydraulic cylinder. So yeah, it has a little, inch, a little over an inch of travel probably. So this thing comes off, which um, before I take it, I want to show you there's a little arrow cast right here. And there's a little notch right here. Kind of got some yellow paint mark on there. And these were balanced as an assembly, so you line those up and put together. In actuality, you could put it anywhere. Right? It fits together any which way you want. But if you want it to be balanced, which that's what all those little holes are there for. Um, yeah, you have to put it together as an assembly. So apparently this part's not balanced. This part is balanced and it compensates for both of them. So a single plane balance. Otherwise there'd be there'd be notches in that little drill holes in that and stuff. So let's pop this thing apart quick like a bunny. I already rebuilt this and when I say rebuilt it, I, it, it didn't work at all. It was just leaking and this bearing here was seized up and so I pulled it all apart and there's a little face seal inside there which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, and it's a, like a carbon face seal and it rubs up against um, a mating surface and that mating surface was just all foobarred so I put it on my valve grinder um, and ground it nice and flat again. I got some pictures I'll put here. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was all not working and then I made it so it was working and when I put the new motor in my skid steer um, it wasn't working again. And I don't really understand why but I have the motor out for a different reason to fix an oil leak and some other stuff so I figured I would pop this guy apart not only because I don't understand why the variable speed wasn't working but I didn't really do a very good explanation of how it worked and when I tried to figure out how this thing even came apart it was impossible to find anything on the internet so I just had to kind of figure it out on my own so this is an effort to make you guys not have to I have to do that. So this is a uh, pull the snap ring off. Standard, standard fare. Okay, so this got a little snap ring in here, which is fun to access. Good news is it can't really fly anywhere. That's the good news. Okay. So this thing should just slide out of there now. Okay. So that's the carbon face seal. And this is the surface that I had to resurface and the way I did that was I pressed new bearings on here and then installed instead of holding the valve in my grinder stationary I held these bearings and then I just twisted this so the grinding wheel was like right here and I just twisted this so it was spinning about these bearings 
Um, and there's another little itty bitty snap ring holding those holding those bearings on. So. And then inside here. There's a spring and then a little washer. And the only thing that the washer is for is like, so this is the wear surface right here. And then there's this washer goes here and then the spring goes on top of the washer. So the washer isn't sitting on top of the carpet thing. So let me lay this thing out how it how it lives in the unit. So that thing goes like that. And then you can see this has little notches in it. This carbon face seal has little notches and there's roll pins in there to actually keep it from rotating. So that goes like that and then the, the little washer and then the spring goes down in that counterboard. See if I can't get a little video of inside there. Yeah, you can see those little dowel pins. Having a little hard time to focus on that, but. So when I pulled this thing apart and it didn't work, Basically, all I did was replace these bearings, and these are just skateboard bearings, a 608 bearing. I ground the surface down, and then I just cleaned everything and put it back together. So, okay, so this is a little bit more of a close up of this. Hopefully, it makes more sense. Those are the two skateboard bearings. There's actually a little spacer in between those bearings, space them apart a little, a little bit. That's the surface that I fixed up on my valve grinder. That's the carbon seal. That's an O-ring that sits on top of that to seal this from... Um, so basically what this thing is doing is you put hydraulic fluid into this hole here. It comes through that hole. So this seal is important. That, that face, that... Um, steel shaft, which is non-rotating, and this, which is rotating, seal. And then it goes through the, the hole in this carbon seal into that hole down there. And then this O-ring seals um, that oil from leaking back around and out, right? So that's important seal. And then this washer is just to make that O-ring have something to sit on so that doesn't leak. And then the spring just holds pressure. That this holds the force on that face seal. So, lots of pieces. A lot of it's pretty complicated setup. Um, when really it's just a it's just a hydraulic cylinder, really. But it's spinning, and you can't just put an O-ring on something that's spinning at 3,000 RPM, and it'll just melt. So that's what the carbon seal's job is. Right. All right, so I popped this piston apart. There it is. So you can see a couple of the O-rings. No ring here, no ring here, and there's another one between here and here on the inside. And then there's a seal. And then there's there's a cross drilling from there to the inside of there. You can probably see a little cross drilling. So that's where the oil enters to react on the piston. So Okay. Time to put this thing back together. Just some time for the shit truck to go by.
And the way this goes together is this little bitty spring goes in here. And this little bitty washer goes in here. And then this itty bitty little o-ring goes in there. And then the carbon seal, which has little notches on it, so you gotta get that lined up. And if it goes upside down, try uh, try again. It's not that finicky actually. Okay, it's springy loaded. And then the bearings and this adapter thing go in next. And it should move like that. You did it right. The original one on this, I had to use my MIG welder to get it out. It was just frozen in there. So, not a big surprise why that wasn't working. If you don't have a pair of snap ring pliers, good luck getting this in. The noise that makes it called a snap ring. Okay, now I just need to press this back together. And for some reason, this is like a press fit. I'm not sure why. It it could totally just be a press it in there and I thought about just taking it to the lathe and making it so it slides in but I guess it needs some retention so this doesn't start spinning around the only thing I can think of but it looks like it was already just put this on there Happy that time. That's good though. Alright, so the only other pieces to the puzzle which I have to put on later are this reactor plate and this ring and then this fitting, which we'll put some Teflon on. Thanks for watching. If you like this content and want more, subscribe, like, and share.